tales for dark nights. The following performance is a first round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. Nobody believed me when I told them I was friends with her. Her name was Tammy. She had beautiful red hair, brown eyes, freckles, and always wore a green dress with a stain down her middle, which I suspected was a stain from a drink. Tammy was there when we first moved in our new house, and introduced herself to my mom, saying that she lived next door. But all my mom did was walk past her, and acted like Tammy didn't even exist. Mom's action seemed to phase Tammy. She just stood there and seemed to tremble. When I laid a hand on her shoulder, it seemed cold like ice. Tammy quickly faced me with a surprised look, like I came out of nowhere. I asked her why she was cold, and she told me that she just came out of her house to meet us, and rolled her eyes as she mentioned how cold it was. That gesture to me looked a little forced, but I brushed my assumptions off. I just met her. I couldn't judge her right away. When I tried to introduce her to my mom, she asked me if Tammy was another imaginary friend, with slight concern in her tone. I was at the age where I stopped believing in imaginary things such as the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus. Tammy was not imaginary. I mean, she was standing right there when I introduced her to my mom. Can she not see her? What made things worse was that Tammy wore her shocked expression again. I wondered what was wrong, but didn't want to ask. Once school started, I noticed that Tammy never came with me when the bus arrived. I asked her why she wasn't coming, and she only shrugged her shoulders and said that her dad doesn't force her to go anymore. I remarked to her how lucky she was and went to school without her. Our friendship immediately clicked as weeks passed, but something seemed odd with Tammy. She never changed clothes and was always cold whenever I touched her. Nevertheless, I ignored it because <laughs> we were friends. But one day changed everything. After school that day, I noticed that there were missing flyers spread all over the neighborhood. When I read one, it showed a picture of a girl named Tammy West York who had been missing for about nine weeks. What made my skin crawl was that the picture looked eerily similar to Tammy, so I took it home and showed it to her. When Tammy read the flyer, she looked horrified. Her face turned pale, her hands trembled as she held it in her hands, and began to sob. I asked her what was wrong, and she looked at me with a hint of despair in her eyes. After a few minutes, she told me she needed to show me something. Tammy led me to my bathroom and locked the door behind her. She turned to me and began to unbutton her dress. I felt a little awkward and wondered what she was doing, but once she revealed her stomach area, I almost vomited. The stain didn't come from a drink like I suspected. The stain was from a wound. Tammy's middle was covered with blood, and in the very center were three stab wounds. I stared in shock as Tammy looked at me. Tears strained down her face as a million questions buzzed in my head. I finally found my voice after moments of silence and asked her what happened. Tammy's voice shook as her shoulders fell. My dad, he, he did it. He, he was drunk. It explains everything. I thought it was a nightmare. Why can't this be a nightmare? Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next Evil Idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling t
tales for dark nights.